Okay, now we're going to talk about Ohm's Law. There's only one concept in this uh, chapter. The Ohm's Law is a very important law that's used um, all the time in solving for electric circuits. We we'll use it over and over again in this chapter. So we're going to define resi resistance and state Ohm's Law. The resistance is defined through this equation. So this is just a definition of resistance. And you say, well, that's weird that you're going to define resistance in an equation where it's not R equals something, but it's uh, R is embedded in the equation, but it still defines R. So R here that appears in this equation is the resistance of the circuit element. So we'll talk about resistors and we'll talk about other circuit elements. Uh, that's not important now, but the resistance of the element is called R. It's related to the voltage across the circuit element. That's um, or the, poten the voltage or the potential difference. Remember the electric potential we talked about last chapter is measured in volts. So we'll call this, generally we'll call it the, the voltage across an element. And that's the difference in the, the electric potential on either side of that element. The current through the element, we know about that, that's measured in amps. And then the resistance is, so the, the, the definition of resistance is V equals IR. What's Ohm's law? Ohm's law is related to this equation and it applies when R does not depend on the current. So, if you look at, uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the next um, slide, but if you have an element that offers some resistance to electrical flow, it's called a resistor, and we denote that in our circuit diagrams by a little squiggly line. So these black lines represent just wires, copper wires, for example. This symbol here represents battery, with this positive terminal having the longest blue line. And then this is um, a, a resistor. Where would you see this in real life? Well, in a, in a flashlight, for example, you have a, a couple of batteries that provide the, uh, the voltage, the EMF, to drive the circuit. And then you have a resistor, this bulb, acts as a resistor. It offers some resistance to the, the flow of electricity. And um, the one side of the battery, maybe the positive side would be connected up here, maybe the negative side would be connected here. So the, the, to complete the circuit, the, the electrons flow around this, this circuit through the filament and, um, and V equals IR. All right. So, now we're going to talk a little bit more about, about Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law applies when the resistor does not depend, the resistance does not depend on the current. All right. Let's look at this diagram here, and we're going to ask where along this, uh, along this graph, uh, for what values of the voltage and the current does the resistance depend, not depend, on the current? Well, from about here to maybe about here, this looks to be pretty much a straight line. That means that the current and the voltage are directly proportional to each other. And the slope is related to the, the resistance. So V equals IR. Here we actually have current plotted as a function of voltage. So if we write this as current, divide both sides of this equation by R, and then we'll get that the current is 1 over R 
times the voltage. So voltage here is along the x-axis, current is along the y-axis, and the coefficient of proportionality is 1 over r. If r does not depend on the current, then we'll get a nice straight line here. So Ohm's law applies here. because this coefficient, this is like the slope, y equals mx plus b, this is the m, in the, the slope, uh, when you're plotting current as a function of voltage. So it applies here. Well, here it does not apply Why? Well, because I and V are no longer proportional to each other. There's some other dependence, and that means that the resistance here depends on the current. So let's see which of these answers. Um, between The resistor obeys Ohm's law for voltages between 0 and 25 volts. Looks like that's about where we thought it was. Uh, this one says 0 and 35. Well, I don't think so. Up here, we're starting to see some, some non-linearity. So that doesn't work. 0 and 40, 30 and 40, etc. So B would be the right answer there. Example. The filament on a light bulb is a resistor in the form of a thin piece of wire, like we talked about before. The wire becomes hot enough to emit light because of the current in it. The flashlight uses two one and a half volt batteries placed in, and we'll talk more about this, but placed end to end, which means in series, to provide a current of 0.4 amps in the filament. Determine the resistance of the glowing filament. Well, we know that V equals IR. We can solve that for, for R by dividing both sides by I. So R will be V over I, that's this equation here. V, we're, uh, it's gonna be three volts. Why is that? Just like in the demo video, um, we put those one and a half volts end to end, six of them to create a nine volt battery. Well, if you just put two one and a half volts uh, batteries end to end, you get a three volt um, So you do that right. Um, three, six, six times one and a half is nine. Yes, and two times one and a half is three. Yeah, exactly. So two, one and a half volts plus one and a half volts is three volts, and then the current we're told is uh, 0.4 amps. And the answer that we get out of this deal is the ohm, 7.5 ohms. I actually did not define the ohm. Let me, um, let me come back here and think about the ohm. The ohm is, the, is the, a voltage in, in volts divided by a current in amps. And, um, and it's just called the ohm. And it's, this is a Greek symbol, omega. It's a capital omega. the name of that Greek symbol. Represents ohms, which measures currents. Okay, uh, so that's the resistance of that filament, seven and a half ohms. So common household things often have, have resistances that are about that value.